Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The year when eagles soar. (laughs) The year when eagles soar. Today we crossed over the threshold of a new year. Who knows, 2016 has been forever consigned to history. And 2017 has opened up before us. And we need to hear this this morning. Has opened up before us as a year of fresh opportunity. The opportunities presented to us in 2017 will only last as long as 2017 lasts. Yes. Hallelujah. The opportunities that you that you have before you today will only last for as long as today lasts. Yes. Amen. The opportunities of a lifetime last only as long as the lifetime of the opportunity. So the Hebrew year 5777 actually began at the beginning of October. And, and the prophetic declaration that we've been given this year is the year... When eagles, so I just want to lay some groundwork for that this morning, but there's a lot of stuff I'm bursting to share, but glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. But you know, but people ask, what's the significance of 5777? And, and so I want us to look at some of what this means for us prophetically. Who knows, it's, 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 it's the prophetic that keeps us connected with heaven. And it's the prophetic that keeps us connected with the rest of the body of Christ. Yeah. But those that are turning their ears towards heaven to hear what God is saying. There's a lot of people that have shut their ears to what God has said, even within the church. But the prophetic keeps us connected. You might look around this morning and say, well, what, what difference can we make? Well, I'll tell you, it's the prophetic that keeps us connected with heaven and what God is doing all over the earth. Amen. Glory to God. I said the prophetic keeps us connected. Amen. So, hallelujah. The year 5776, remember the year of the righteous roar, and then 5777, the year when eagles soar, are actually connected in more than the fact that one just follows the other. In fact, there's a powerful prophetic progression in the Hebrew numbers, contained within the Hebrew numbers. And it's really interesting that the year, in fact, we sang again this morning, the year of the roar song that Ali here wrote, uh, actually goes on into this year and that it follows the prophetic timeline because it says the lions will roar and the eagles will soar. So we've been proclaiming that anyhow ever since Ali wrote that song. Amen. So the number corresponded to 2015, the number 5, and I think five is the number of grace. It's interesting that the 5775, five, the palindrome, it was like a grace sandwich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, I was just thinking about it this morning as we were singing, but, but the number corresponding to 2015, the number five is the Hebrew letter He. The letter He means to behold, means to see as through a window. He is also connected with the word breath because the pictograph is of a man with his arms raised and praising God. Remember God's name, Yod, He, Vav, He, God breathes, I breathe, because He breathes, I breathe, because He lives, I live. The number of the letter, He, Five, also speaks of, of expression and revelation. It's like, basically it's like God says, because God says, I see. If you want to, if you want to see what's truly happening, you need to hear what God says. When you hear what God says, you begin to see what God yeah. is doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, amen. So the letter, Vav, is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and has the numeric value of six. The picture for Vav looks like a tent peg. The meaning of the word Vav is hook, like the hooks that were used to connect uh, the different parts of the tabernacle when it was being assembled. And so Vav, like He, is present in the, in the covenant name of God. Yod, He, Vav, He. Six is the number of a man. And so the letter Vav carries the meaning of joining or connecting God with man, connecting heaven with the earth. Is it, are you following this this morning? <laughs> so anyway, as I studying and meditating on this last year, I, I really could sense an excitement, you know, the old fireworks starting to kick off, and again on the inside of me, because a scripture that, that's really got a hold of me and gripped me and really uh, has been right there at the very foundation level in my life and impacted on my understanding over the past few years is First Corinthians six seventeen. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Well, you need to take such scriptures like that and just chew on them for about 20 years or something and, and, be, and, and begin to live in what that means. I mean, religion can't cut it, man. Religion just gets blown apart with, with words like these. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I mean, you can just pass over that and carry on to verse 18. Or you can stop there and say, hang on a minute. What, what is this saying? You know, last year, if you remember, I also found a... a, a uh, a posting on online by a Jewish rabbi who had no, you know, uh, churchy prophetic agendas. But the, he said, this is what he said. The Hebrew for six is the letter Vav, 
For those who know a little Hebrew, you know that this letter in biblical Hebrew can ch change tenses and meanings. It's a letter that signifies change and transition. It's often translated simply as and, implying movement. And then he goes on, he says, what are the letters telling us? That this new year of 5776 for us can be a year of evolving insight, a greater awareness of the spiritual in our life, and a year that if we but allow ourselves to see can be a year of growth and transition. The letters tell us that we are open to a new year of spiritual awareness, insight, growth and transition if we only are able to open our eyes and see it. And then he finished with these words, not a bad forecast. I really like that, you know, because how much of what gets done around here depends on a good forecast. Yes. You know, I mean, we saw again over the last couple of weeks, a bad forecast can shut down and can certainly limit our activity or productivity. I mean, how many ferries, again, this year have been cancelled because of a bad forecast? They were cancelled on two days ahead of time because of a bad forecast. They were saying, well, there'll be no ferry on such... I remember, was it was the last Friday. The, the ferries were cancelled on Wednesday night, I think, <laughs> because of a bad forecast. So remember, the year 5775 was the year of great change. And I know, that, I know that some people scoff when they hear prophetic people talk about, you know, the significance of the numbers in, in the Hebrew year and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I mean, we need to get the cynic out of us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, I, I think being a little bit skeptical sometimes is okay. But cynical is poison. Cynicism is poison. You know, I mean, God doesn't hold it against you if, you if you want to take a second look, you know, or just hold back a little bit. But, but be like the Bereans, the real Bereans, not the Bereans that present themselves on the internet these days, but the real Bereans who actually went searching the scriptures because they were desperate to see if what Paul said was the truth because it sounded so blinking exciting. <laughs> hey, Amen. <man. laughs> not the ones who were trying to rip it apart, trying to trying to expose them as being a heretic in that. No, they were wanting to find out, was it real? Is this real? Because if this is real, we were going to run with this. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And I want you to remind you this morning, there's always a good forecast. Amen. It's all, and it's about to get better. You know, the year of the righteous roar was about restoring the spirit roar and moving people from the attitude, remember, of passive acceptance, moving people from that attitude of, of accepting everything that comes along as if it's just what's meant to be, moving them to active and aggressive expectancy, not just in some parts of their lives, not just in their spiritual lives, but in every area of our lives. Amen. Remember, Vav, like He, is present in the covenant name of God. Yod, He, Vav, He, six is the number of a man. And, and, and so the, the letter Vav, again, carries that meaning of joining or connecting God with man connecting heaven and earth. So we are joined with the Lord and our spirit is one with his. In Isaiah 40, 31, we're moving this forward now, 5777. In Isaiah 40, 31, the Hebrew word for weight is a Hebrew word, kavah. It means, it carries the meaning of being bound together. It carries the meaning of being joined with and, 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 and fares waiting expectantly. So what's it, it's speaking about being joined together with the Lord bound together with him. Again, it's covenant language. And so in this year, 5777, the year when eagles soar, this realization that we're actually bound together, joined to the Lord, one spirit with him, prepares us, if you can receive that and accept that and get excited about that and begin to rejoice in that, it prepares us to rise up into a new place of maturity, a new place of taking, or a place of authority, and a place of responsibility as we see and speak and act as our Father sees and speaks. And that's, we've been talking about this, remember, from, from, for the last uh, two or three months. But, but, but Jesus, who was the embodiment of heaven and earth coming together in a person. He was 100% God and 100% man. He was the embodiment of heaven and earth coming together in a person. He was the Word made flesh. He, he said something. He said everything that he did or everything that he said and everything that he did was what he heard and saw his father do. He said something else. He said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. You hear that? They are spirit and life. So his words can only be accurately processed by your spirit and not by your soul. I mean, I've been saying this for many years now. So many people take God's word, try and process it in their soul. They come out with all kinds of stuff. That's why the church is so divided, because the word's been processed by the soul. Because your spirit always says yes and amen to what God says. Your spirit receives God's word as it is spoken. 
But the soul takes it and doesn't know how to deal with it. And chops it up and turns it into a hundred different things. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual... No, I want to... Well, let me finish and I'll say something here. But this, he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For, he, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. In the message translation it says, Spirit can be known only by spirit. God's spirit and our spirits in open communion. Wow, I like that. <laughs> You know, this, this year when the eagle soar, we're not talking about, about bringing people up into some kind of super spiritual maze. I, I spoke of that a couple of weeks ago. I think there's two different types of super spirituality. There's the kind that, you know, the, the kind that the, the world talks about, you know, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. In one sense, you need to be heavenly minded if you're going to be any earthly good. But we're not talking about that kind of super spirituality that the Levite and the priest had when they were walking up the road and the guy had been attacked by robbers and they were both equipped to do something about it but they were so busy trying to get to, down to, get to church that they just ignored the guy. <laughs> That's super spirituality that doesn't see anything. There's another type of super spirituality that I mentioned though that, 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 that I, think, I think I said it's got, you know, they've got a, one of these Christian tattoos it says mug across their forehead. <laughs> They have a target on the front, and if you look closely enough, you can see that it's been manufactured by Soft Touch Incorporated. <laughs> but but let, let me just say this. I've been thinking about this just over the last 24 hours, and I thought, I mean, I mean, you know, I'll tell you the difference. Super spiritual people who fall into that second category, and the church is full of them. Most of us have probably been down that road. I mean, yeah, I mean we want to scratch our head. How did that happen? <laughs> we got ripped off. We got... We got abused, we got every kind of stuff happened to us because we, we didn't... And I'll tell you how it happens. That category of super spiritual people don't know how to discern between people with problems and problem people. <laughs> the world is full of people with problems. And we're here to help them. And we can sit down and we can help them with all of their problems and we can point them to the solution to all of their problems because the Word of God contains the solution to all of their problems. Jesus is the solution to all of their problems. And, and people with problems, you know, very often they're happy to receive that. And they can be totally transformed and their lives can be so radically changed that they're unrecognizable from the person that they used to be. But problem people are different. The problem people might be people with problems, but they don't want anybody to part them from their problems. They just want you to sit down and, 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 and sympathize with them and soft soap them and let them talk about their problem. And I don't want to hear about your problem. I want to tell you the solution to your problem. Yeah. You tell me at once, I'll give you the solution. Then we can go somewhere with this. If, you, yeah. if I tell you the solution and you want to start talking about your problem again, you're not a person with a problem. You're a problem person. Your problem is your identity. And you don't want to part from it. But Jesus came to give you a new identity. <laughs> so if you want to get mugged, remove the tattoo, remove, you know, in the kingdom, tattoos can be removed. Hallelujah. If you want to get mugged, removed from your forehead and your, your target was soft, from soft touch incorporated, taken off you, then you need to learn to discern between people with problems and problem people. Yeah. And it's, 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 not, it's not that difficult. Sit down with them for half an hour and you'll find out what they are. Does that make, can I help with anybody? If it's worth coming for that, today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, some super spiritual problems just got delivered. Some super spiritual people just got delivered right there. Hallelujah. I think I got delivered myself a little bit. Lord help me. So what can I say? <laughs> I've known it for years, I just didn't know how to walk it. <laughs> because, you know why? Because you, you still get your back door open to guilt and condemnation. Anyway, we could, we could talk about it, we could preach off that for a while. So anyway, listen up for some more on the Hebrew year 5777. Which, as I said, actually began, at the, I think it was on the 2nd of October this year, or last year, 2016. And, and that because this year, Hebrew year 5777 corresponds with their year 2017. So the number six 
the number of a man is the Hebrew letter Vav, but the number seven, and you need to hear a skeptic, skeptic sign if you're starting to fall asleep, pinch yourself, tickle yourself, try it with the person next door if you're related or married or something. But the number seven is the letter Zayin, and it's actually referred to as a crowned Vav, or a crowned man. So six is the Hebrew letter Vav, but the number seven is the Hebrew letter Zayin, and it's referred to as a crowned Vav, a crowned man. See, we've been called up <laughs> to rule and to reign, to yes, take our place yes. in Christ. Psalm chapter 8, verses 4 to 6. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than Elohim. You have made him a little lower than God. You have made him a little lower than yourself. Some translations say angels, but the Hebrew word is Elohim. Elohim is God. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to... Well, what about the angels? Well, the angels are a different order of creation. God did not create the angels in his image and in his likeness, but he did create man. So that's a total mistranslation. It's probably the translator's going... How do you deal with this? <laughs> Same as they had to leave Abba in there. I'm glad they did. <laughs> I wasn't glad when I scratched my head and wrote, what's this Abba word? What's that mean? But then I know it. I'm glad they did. <laughs> you have crowned him. You made him a little lower than, than Elohim, than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. That's your feet. That's my feet. The angels are scratching their head. They're asking that question. What is man that you're mindful of him? Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And the darkness and deep darkness to people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Hey, come on, folks. This is the year when eagles soar. Amen. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Man, you can say that so fast, it doesn't mean none, but I you, go back in there, it's all here, everything's covered. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you, who crowns you, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, yeah. love and compassion, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. So the number seven, the number seven is also... The symbol of a sword, and it's also the symbol of a kneeling man. So as a word, the number seven means cutting or to cut. Who knows, the word covenant is also equivalent to the number seven. So apparently, this Hebrew word, Zayin, it's a paradoxical word because it means weapon or sword, but it also comes or derives from a root word that means sustenance or nourishment. Take some of these things out because I'm going to... You need, to, you need to retain them for a while. Ephesians chapter 6, 17 says that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4, 12 says that the Word of God is like a two-edged sword that is able to cut, come on folks, between the soul and the Spirit. It's the only agent that's able to get between your soul and your Spirit. See, a lot of Christians don't even believe that you have a soul and a Spirit that are, that are different. They think they're just the one thing. But the Word of God says that the, the, He's able to cut between the soul and the spirit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe, as it talks about we need to be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. The Word of God tells us there's a difference between soul and spirit. And the Word of God is the only agent that's able to cut between the soul and the spirit, differentiate between the two. Now, Jesus said that man doesn't live, somebody help me, by bread alone. It means sword, but it also means sustenance, nourishment. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema that God speaks. Every rhema word that God speaks. The Greek word is rhema for word there. Now when Jesus began to speak spirit words, remember this in John chapter 6, when Jesus began to speak spirit words concerning covenant, when he began to speak to his disciples, a large group of disciples, about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, many 
of his disciples left. He said, whoa, what's this? Can't handle this. Listen, listen. It was bouncing off their soul. When he asked the twelve, he turned to the twelve, he says, are you guys going too? Do you want to go away as well? I don't know how many people I've seen walk out of church because the word, the spirit words were bouncing off their soul. And I brought, it broke my heart to see them go, but I tell you, that's the only reason they left, because the spirit words were bouncing off her soul. And I'm still standing at the door. I'm still out on the back porch waiting. Not for them to come back to me, for them to come back to Abba. <laughs> See, amen. Yes, and amen. Do your spirit words. <laughs> when he asked the, the rest of the disciples, Are you going to go away as well? Do you want to go? The door's open. You always have a choice. Peter responds and he says, Where else can we go? Because you have the rhema of eternal life. You have the words. The word again is rhema. See, the rhema. Is that verse or portion of the Logos? The Logos refers to the entirety of Scripture. The Rhema is that verse or portion of the Logos which the Holy Spirit communicates to us in specific situations in which we pick up and begin to wield as a sword, as the sword of the Spirit. Remember what Paul said to the Corinthian church, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're not of the flesh, but they are mighty we don't pick up physical swords and begin to cut people up. No, we take up the sword of the Spirit because it's mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. See, if we fail, you need to hear this this morning, please. Please listen to this. We're not just talking about numbers here. We're talking about something way deeper and bigger and more awesome than that. If we fail to take up the shield of faith, if we fail to embrace the spirit word that is actually our offensive weapon, it's our offensive weapon in the spiritual warfare that we are engaged in. Because whether you recognize it or not, we are engaged in a spiritual warfare. We will be wide open. We will be wide open and completely vulnerable to every one of the other subtle voices that are out there intent upon hooking our soul. And when they hook our soul, they begin to suck us into a vortex of confusion and spiritual blindness. I want you to hear this this morning. And spiritual blindness that actually renders us unable to recognize and unequipped to stand against and resist all of the strategies of the enemy. All of the strategies that he employs as he comes, Jesus said, only ever to steal, to kill and to destroy. But if you will take up that shield of faith, if you will embrace the Spirit Word, if you will take up the sword of the Spirit, you will be equipped to deal with Him. To turn Him back. So that He will never again be able to steal from you. He will never be able to enter into your life and kill or destroy. Hallelujah. Or anything that you're responsible for within your family. you got to hear this more. This is not just... We're not here passing a religious hour. I'm here in a brand new year with a message, glory to God, to equip you and help you to take this thing forward. Hallelujah. To see his kingdom come. To see his will done on earth as it is in heaven. To see all of his kingdom purposes fulfilled. Hallelujah. If we fail to take up that shield of faith, if we, if we reject and, and, and fail to embrace the, that spirit word that is our offensive weapon, we will be like... These disciples who walked away from their life source. They walked away from their supernatural, their place of supernatural provision and protection and will be like them simply because we allowed spirit words to be rejected by our soul. Did you hear what I said? Simply because we allowed spirit words to be rejected by our soul. Because we took them into our soul and we tried to try and reason it through. Your soul doesn't know how to deal with the word of God. You come up with a hundred reasons why it's nonsense, why it's rubbish, why it's not true. You try and take spirit words, you'll say, well, and you, you take the Bible and you go, well, it contradicts itself. Who says that? Your soul says that. Your spirit will never say that. <laughs> Your spirit deals with all the contradictions and discovers they don't exist. <laughs> How do I know that? Because I tried it. <laughs> 
I'm not up here with theory this morning. Up here, I'm up here to tell you I've been through this stuff. Where to go? Kubu Shakabasa. Well, I don't think you're supposed to speak in tongues in public. Who said that? Your soul said that. But I would never say such a ridiculous thing. <laughs> well, where's the interpretation? Well, you listen up, you'll hear it. <laughs> Flowing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. I'm not apologizing. <laughs> anyway, as I've been saying over the past few months, regarding this being the year when eagles soar, it's all about moving us to a place of spiritual maturity. Say maturity. maturity. Look in the mirror, say maturity. maturity. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 16, and he himself, talking about Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, or the building up of the body of Christ. Till we all, say we all, we all. till we all, say all. all, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Till we all come to the place where we just say yes and amen to everything God says. And of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him. May say grow up. Grow up. Say soul grow up. Soul grow up. <laughs> Get in line. Kids don't like to get in line, do they? Nah. <laughs> Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. New Living Translation, a couple of verses says this. In verse 13 and 14, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Okay, so since Zion represents, the Hebrew word Zion represents both the number seven and a sword. It's not surprising, and you need to hear this, that it's, this, that it's used to cut up or divide time into units of seven. The Sabbath, or the Shabbat, the seventh day of the seven day week, the week of days. Pentecost, or Shavuot in, in the Hebrew, the 49th day after Passover, the week of weeks. Seven weeks of seven days. Tishri is the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew year, and it's the week of months. Shemitah is the seventh year of rest for the land. It's the week of years. Jubilee, or Yavel, in, 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 uh, in, in Hebrew, is the 49th year. It's the week of weeks of years. And then ultimately we'll have the millennial kingdom, which is the seventh millennium of human history, which will be the week of thousands. That's just a wee bonus chucked in there for you again. So the number seven has always been regarded in the Jewish tradition as the number of completion, the number of wholeness, the number of blessing, and the number of rest. You hear it referred to sometimes as a perfect number, don't you? In the New Testament, perfect equals mature. So the number seven could be seen as the number of maturity. The crowned man, the boy, becomes a man. You hearing this this morning? Now the Hebrew word for time, zman, zman, begins with the letter zayin. And zman means, is, or is translated in, in the scripture as, uh, variously as, as time, season, appointed period, epoch, or times. And I believe that's interesting because over the next couple of weeks, the Lord's been speaking to me over the last month or so about something very powerful. And, and, and over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be speaking about timing and destiny. The timing of our destiny, very important. <coughs> some stuff really just opened my eyes to see some things from a whole new perspective that just set me free in many ways. Glory to God. You know, the truth always sets you free. Yes. Hallelujah. I said that some people have been asking questions, and some questions are going to be answered if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> if you can hear. 
let me say this. If you listen, you will hear. Yes. Jesus said, let him who has an ear hear. What ear is he talking about? He's not talking about two things on the side of your head. Well, they'll let the sound in, but the ear is, he said ear, not ears. He didn't say him that is ears, he said he that is an ear. Where's that ear? It's in your spirit. He that is an ear, let him hear what the spirit, that's the, the ear that you hear from God is your spirit. Let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. So as we have transitioned, from what we have been proclaiming and experiencing as the year of the righteous roar. I would like to read the following testimony, and this comes from our friends at the Ten of David in Ottawa. I went on to their website, obviously they, they have a meeting, they meet together on New Year's Eve usually every year, and, and they bring a lot of prophetic stuff from different people, and they bring it all together, and then, but it's never, never really issued out there until after New Year. So this, I went to their website last night anyway, and it says, this is, this is a word that was posted on the, on the Thursday, the 10th of November, 2016. What I'm saying, we're transitioning from the year of the righteous roar when we spoke about restoring the roar, remember, to, to, to move from passive acceptance to active and aggressive expectancy into the year when eagles soar. But listen, just a, a Thursday, 10th of November 2016, a word about the American election. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven, Acts 2 2. It all began in Jerusalem the night before the American election. A large global gathering was being, led, was being held, led by David Damien. All of the Americans present in the building were asked to step forward and the thousands that were there began to cry out to God for the United States and their election. Listen to what it says. It was not a cry, it was a roar. You could feel the sound resonate in the heavens, breaking the sound barrier between heaven and earth. Something was released from Jerusalem that spread across the globe. The next day was election day in the United States. I personally have never witnessed so many people gathering together to pray all over the world. I think this is Dale speaking. There was a sense that destiny was hanging in the balance for this great country. I had the privilege with several others to join in the prayer for the election with the National House of Prayer in Ottawa. Throughout the week and for several months there had been such a war in the heavenlies that you had to know that the outcome of this election was of absolute importance. Even that morning many of us felt the lingering turmoil in the spirit. But as we prayed and the morning wore on, something shifted in the atmosphere. We all suddenly began to feel an absolute peace come over us. God had this thing in control. He was about to shift things. Many of you were witness to that shift. At the beginning of the evening, everything was going one way, and suddenly it began to drastically change, almost unbelievably, a roar from heaven. We've been, we've been proclaiming that and declaring that the year of the righteous roar. We don't know what you know. Sometimes you don't know what you're involved in. Sometimes you just don't understand. You feel the grasp, the, the, the immensity of what you're doing. Because you look around you and you think, well, look at us. If, if you're connected with heaven, you're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds that might exist somewhere that might be global strongholds. If you're hearing what God has said. I was talking to my friend Alan Robertson from... Uh, from uh, South Carolina the other day. I said, what, what, what's happening? He said, well, there's a lot of people upset over here. I said, why is that? He said, because of the election. I said, is that right? I said, so tell me this, he said. I said, is it, uh, is, I said, is, uh, uh, what about in your church? He said, well, in our church, most folks are, are okay there. I said, um, I said, tell me this. I said, is, is it the, the younger generation that are upset? I said, that's very interesting. I said, because I find that as well. A lot of the younger people are upset about it. And I'll tell you why, because... But there's, a, there's, a, there's an attack. There's voices that are coming to program you. Subtle voices are coming to, 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 to interfere with what has been coming from God and heaven. This is not about person, people. It's not about personalities. I, 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 I prefer not to talk about personalities. I prefer not to talk, name the names of men. I want, what God is speaking, there's, you need to understand. You've got to be really, really tune in, tune in, tune in. Tune in because God is speaking something into the earth. God's promises are being fulfilled. He said there was a, she said there was a mighty roar from heaven. The bulls had been tipped. Then it goes, she goes on and says, nearly done. One of the things that we sensed at the National House of Prayer in Ottawa was that it was very important that the church would not stop praying on November the 9th. This was confirmed by a word from Bobby Connor today when he talked about the head of the snake being cut off. But to remember that there is still plenty of venom in the head to do damage in the next few months. We're beginning to see that already. Yes. We're beginning to see what happened to the United Nations. Yes. But you need to understand the first person, in fact, she goes on to say that the first head of state that Donald Trump invited to the White House, forget Donald Trump, the first head of state that that man invited to his White House was Benjamin Netanyahu. Jerusalem is being heard just as it was in the beginning 
when a relatively small group of people released a sound from heaven that engulfed the entire world. So that roar from Jerusalem on November the 7th has released the sound of revival that will reverberate across the earth. The Lord has roared from Zion. Many blessings, Ten of David. We need to listen. This sign up to that. We're done. We need to listen up. We need to tune in. It's not the end of the roar. That's why I left that up there. It's not the end of the roar. It was all about restoring the roar. Because it's the roar that causes the eagles to soar. It's the roar that causes the eagles to soar. It's the roar that fuels the soar. <laughs> We're not saying, well, that's, that's five, seven, seven, six over. We can forget the roar. No, the roar was being restored. The roar has been restored. You've got to keep and maintain that roar. Because there's things happening in the world. I tell you, if you try and if you try and understand them, if you try and discern them naturally, you'll miss it all. And that's what happened with that whole stuff in the American election. They looked at personalities and they looked at people and they looked at what they said and they tried and they took them in the soul and they tried to figure it all out and came up with all kinds of stuff. But you got to hear from heaven. I shared it with I think here on a Wednesday night. It's got nothing to do with personalities. Absolutely nothing to do with personalities. It's got to do with issues. Even in, in, in taking that ex ex election as an example, who is, say, who is standing up for the sanctity of life? Because that's what's important. It's an issue here. It's not a person or a personality. It's nothing to do with, with, with their character or what they've been up to or what they've done in their past or their history. It's an issue here. Who is, stand who, who is going to make decisions? Who is going to bring people into places of authority and power that are going to protect the sanctity of life? Because that's the issue. That's the issue. And you can't hear that in your soul. Your soul has a hundred thousand reasons why the, the, these things are... Well, you know, like people say, well, you know, a woman has a right to do with anything she likes with her own body. I absolutely concur. But she has no right to do what she pleases with a new life that's grown inside her. Because that's not her body, that's a new body. <laughs> she, she is duty-bound by the law of God and the law of the land to protect that life with every fibre of her being. Come on, somebody. These are the issues. That's what we need to hear in the spirit. Because if you look at people, people will always let you down. Look at people, they'll always disappoint you. Look at people, you'll never be able to walk for more than six months without falling off into some place of despair because some person didn't come up to your expectations. We are not looking to people to meet our expectations. We are looking to the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords, that we are looking to move from that place of passive acceptance to the place of active and aggressive expectancy to believe that heaven is about to hit the earth in a brand new way, glory to God, in ways that are going to be nation changing, <coughs> world changing, transforming. We're going to see a harvest come in, we're going to see the prodigals coming home, we're going to see people retuned to life in the spirit, not religion as usual, but life in the spirit. Father, we just invite you to come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God say, A resounding, a resounding, resounding, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Happy, 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 blessed and prosperous New Year. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. I raise a hallelujah.